Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Dave and today we're looking at this new acquisition for the farm and it may look like a golf cart but I'm going to refer to it as our new farm vehicle. It's an electric golf cart made by Club Car and it's a 1990 model. I found it on the local Facebook marketplace for $2,800 and I thought it was a pretty good deal but there's a few things I've found since I've purchased it that I think maybe it wasn't so good but anyway we'll go into those so what do I want to do with this thing so I was looking at a range of vehicles that we could use around the farm and I went online and looked at what the options were and I found a couple of electronic vehicles or electric vehicles that seemed to be ideal but the price was just too high it was just way out of the budget I looked at some newer model golf carts and they ranged in prices anywhere between sort of five and a half thousand to seven and a half thousand and that still seemed a bit high so I started looking around for a second-hand golf cart and there weren't many around, especially locally. I looked in um, a couple of the local for sale places and I couldn't see anything. And I've been looking for a couple of weeks to see if I could find uh, a local golf cart. And this was the only one that I could find. And I went and had a look at it. The guy selling it was moving house and really didn't want to lug it to a new house. And he had it for about a year and a half and used to just drive around the neighbourhood in it take his kids for a ride because this particular golf cart it's a uh, a model called a fairway villager and it's not a DS model club car it's just a D and what that means is that it's a 36 volt system and it was set up with these extra seats in the back so it was used up in a resort in near Brisbane called Sanctuary Cove and I guess what it was meant to do was just to ferry people around the resort and that's why it's got the back seat on the back I don't think it was used that much for people playing golf and putting golf clubs in I think it was mainly just for ferrying people around uh, a 36 volt system so it's a 1990 model and again what i found out since i've owned it and i've only had it sort of a week or so i'll have a look under here where the, the batteries are is that it's uh it's a very old system and club car had a system up to about 1993 or 1992 i think when it changed and this is 1990 model so we'll have a look at that system in a minute and sort of talk about batteries and so forth so what do I want to do with it I really want to have it so I can use it around the farm um, our land here is pretty flat so hills aren't really a problem that's the lavender patch over there lavender's looking quite good changing the subject it's coming on quite nicely it's the beginning of May now in 2022 so it's autumn winter's not far around the corner so what I want to do with this is um, a couple of things is I want to get rid of this back seat I want to take this off and I want to put a some sort of tray on the back probably starting from about the back of the seat here and then running it to the back and I think that'll give me a fairly good size that I can use for putting tools and things on and carting things around the farm. So a carry-all or a utility tray is what we'll do. Uh, what I'd like to do is actually maybe remove the roof and put a solar panel on the top and work out some sort of system where I can solar charge the batteries. So when I'm running around outside I really don't even have to plug it into the power so that is what I want to do 
Uh, what else do I need to do? I'll probably paint it at some stage. The body itself is not too bad. The fiberglass or polyglass, I'm not too sure what it is, is in not too bad condition. So I think I'll probably at some stage I'll probably paint it. What colour yet, I don't know. It's actually got lights in it. Um, it was under conditional registration in Queensland in 2004. So I guess they had it when uh, they had to run around resorts and on roads and things that they had to have some sort of registration on it. So it could be quite good to put uh, or to keep the lights on it, upgrade those maybe to LED. Not that we'd need to go around uh, anywhere at night. The tyres are, or the wheels are, the standard sort of golf cart 8 inch wheels and I don't know what I'm going to do with these at the minute there's a bit of tread on the front but not so much on the back but what I do like is that you can just glide into this thing so the height is perfect you can just sort of get behind the wheel and off you go so I have seen them where people put in 4 inch and 6 inch lift kits and get them off the ground and put huge big wheels on them and I don't know whether I'll actually do that or not I think I can go up to a 12 inch rim and tyre combination without actually having to modify the body so I might look at that option and try and get slightly grippier tyres because these ones on the grass I don't think are going to be much good um, what else? Um, the, the seller had only charged it briefly the night before I picked it up, so um, I haven't really driven it at all. I've just uh, taken it out of the garage today and driven it over here. But uh, he was saying that he had problems charging the batteries and the battery charges that he gave me with the unit, he said don't work. So I don't know how he was charging the batteries, but when I look at the, the dash, it looks pretty bad. There's a flashing light on there. It's flashing on zero, which I guess means that it's dead empty or the batteries are dead empty. So we're gonna have to um, have a look at the batteries and see what's going on there. But I think it'll be a good unit. Something to have a bit of a play around with. Turn it into a electronic farm vehicle. So the battery system that's in this currently, uh, there are six 6 volt batteries, so it's a 36 volt system. Each of these batteries is a 6 volt battery. And they're connected in series. So I have 6 times 6 is 36 volts. And when I looked at this, at the seller's place where he was selling it, I thought the batteries were actually quite good and I was trying to work out a way to read the code on the batteries to see how old they were and they had a number down here which I started looking at and this was a 21 9 D and 2 and I went on a couple of websites and had a look at battery coatings and a lot of them said that the first two numbers were the year of manufacture and the third number was the month of the year so I sort of got quite excited and thought well this is pretty cool these batteries are only been in there since September 2021 which means they're only six or seven months old they should be you beaut but they seem to be pretty bad and I can see that they're actually bulging down the sides which I don't think they're meant to do. If it was a really cold climate, I might say that the batteries had frozen or something, but there's no chance of that where we are. So I can only think that they've been overcharged at some stage. And anyway, so I went to the US battery site. So four of these batteries, there's two there, two there and two here. These two are different brand. I actually don't know what these ones are. It hasn't actually got a name that I can see on them. So there's four of these US batteries and I went onto the US batteries website and it actually had a link on there to decipher the codes and 
What they were pointing out is that on their terminals they have a numbers and a letter on their terminals so you can use that to decipher how old the batteries are. So on these particular batteries it has a 1, an 8 and an X and when I looked it up to see what that meant it came back as being a battery that was made in 2008. So these four batteries are at least what 14 years old and how old these two are I don't know. So I think what I've got to try and do first is put them on charge. I've got a 12 volt normal car charger for lead acid batteries so what I'll do is I'll charge two banks at a time so I'll charge these two first and then the central two and then the two there and get a bit of a reading on how much they charge up to and we'll hopefully uh, we can take it for a bit of a, a drive. I've got a couple of my own chargers I'm going to try and use um, just to get some charge into the battery so this is a 12 volt normal battery charger and I've also got a one that's made for gel cell batteries as well so I'm going to try both of those and see whether I can get some charge into the batteries. I've had the batteries on charge for most of the day and what I've got is my 12 volt battery charger there and I'm doing basically two batteries at a time so in total there's six batteries six volts per battery so I'm charging two banks at a time so I'm currently charging this bank here I've already done these two here and I've already done those two there so that's been on most of the day so I'll get the voltage meter out and have a look to see how much charge is in them and whether we can go for a drive so I've got my multimeter and I've got one side connected up to the negative on the last battery and I'm just going to connect it to down here to the positive and just see what I get and what's that showing 35.7 volts and I should have about 36 to run it so that's not too bad let's take it for a drive and see how we go gone about a hundred meters down our driveway and already the cuts really slow and another problem I can see is there's a little uh, battery meter indicator thing on the dash here and it started off at about 75% which I thought was going to be quite good but all of a sudden it's dropped down to zero and it's flashing so I think that probably means we haven't got a lot of power left so I think probably the batteries which I thought were going to be okay maybe they aren't so I'm going to have to go back to the workshop I think and have another look at the batteries and do some individual tests on each battery and see if there's a problem in them. I was really hoping when I bought it that I wouldn't have to think about replacing the batteries straight away although I did sort of factor it into the budget and with the price that I bought the cart for, I felt that I could probably put new batteries in it if I really had to, but it's something I don't want to do particularly straight away. But anyway, let's have a look. The other thing I can notice that I'm going to have to fix is it's absolutely got no brakes. You put the foot down on the brake pedal and it almost slows a little bit, but certainly doesn't want to stop you. So that's going to have to be one of the items we're going to have to look at. But I've been running it now for maybe two or three hundred meters and I'm just about at a stop. It's just crawling back to the house. OK, 
I'm just going to check each block of batteries to see how close to 12 volts they are. So these are the first two and I've got 12.26 so that's pretty good. Those are these two ones that are on the end here that are the different brand so let's check the middle two. middle two are 9.7 volts so that's not so great all right we'll check the two on the outside okay I'll check the last block of two so that is 9.5 so that's also pretty low so unfortunately the decision is that I need to get new batteries and I really didn't want to fork out $1,600 and put in the old conventional lead acid type batteries so I thought I would look around for a, a lithium iron phosphate battery alternative and I found a good Australian company uh, and I found batteries on their site but when I went to order them they didn't have any stock so I had to look around for something that was compatible or suitable for the golf cart and doing some research online I found out that the average 36 volt golf cart motor consumes anywhere between about 25 and 75 ampere hour draw so I needed a battery that was going to be reasonably heavy duty enough that I could cater for that sort of current that I needed up to sort of 75 amp hour or 75 amps so I decided that a 100 ampere hour battery would be probably the most suitable and that leads to another thing that I found out that if you um, put in these batteries and what I'm going for is a 12 volt battery so I'm going to put in three 12 volt batteries to give me the 36 volts and they're going to be connected in series so 12 and 12 and 12 is 36 but it still remains a hundred ampere hour capacity even though you're putting three batteries in so the other thing I needed to find out was that when you start looking for a lot of lithium iron phosphate batteries is some of them you can put in series and parallel and some of them you can't depends on the BMS or the battery management system within the battery that will allow you to put them in series or not so you need to look at the specifications of the battery and see whether they say that's okay to do it so because I couldn't get the Australian batteries that I wanted I hunted around on the internet and I found these ones and these ones are called an echo worthy they're a Chinese battery um, but it meets the specifications that I wanted to do so primarily it's a hundred amp hour capacity it's got 3,000 cycles 10 year or more lifespan and it's got a built-in BMS or battery management system so these particular batteries these echo worthy batteries you can put in series to give you the 36 volts another important thing you need to look at if you're going to buy batteries for a, a golf cart and again this is just what I found out by sort of looking online and doing some research is you have to look at these specs to see what the draw capacity is so a lot of batteries although it might say it's a hundred ampere hour battery you may not or you may be able to only draw 50 of those amps out at a time before the BMS cuts off the supply and you don't have any further power so this one if I look the specs here says that the maximum discharge current current spelt wrong C Y double R E N T sirent okay is a hundred amps so you can draw a hundred amps out of the battery so you can draw the maximum capacity of the battery if you need to so that's an important thing to remember when you're looking at batteries as well make sure you can draw the maximum capacity of the battery so I've got three of those they turned up I ordered those online they turned up I've got three of those to put in I don't think 
they come very charged so the next thing I'll have to do is put these on a charger and take out the old batteries that are in the cart and replace them with these ones so that'll be the next exercise. Well I've got to say I'm a little disappointed in myself for probably not picking up the fact that the batteries were so bad maybe I could have negotiated a slightly better deal if I'd known they were they were not so good but anyway we've got the new batteries delivered now and they're just about ready to put in we'll put those on the charger we'll organize to get the old lead acid batteries out and we'll pick up the next episode when we start that process of swapping those batteries over and we'll also look at some of the new items that I've had a look at to buy in regard to solar panels and solar chargers so that'll be in the next episode so thanks for watching appreciate your support and we'll see you next time and that's a cue for driving into the sunset but the battery's dead so we'll just have to walk see you next time